A very warm welcome to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Thanks for clicking on. Hope everybody is well and safe out there. We will look at the details with regards to the impacts of Storm Kieran, some of the records that have uh, been broken, both in terms of uh, November low pressure over the UK, as well as the wind gusts in excess of 120 miles an hour in northwestern France. We've also seen significant damage through the Channel Islands as well. Um, in Saturday's video, by the way, I am going to release the fourth winter update and I will be looking, of course, at the latest stats with regards to El Nino, the Indian Ocean Dipole, solar activity, where we're at, we're at with regards to Eurasian snow cover and other factors as well, including the long range models and as well thrown in for good measure. I am going to start making a little bit of a call with regards to where I think this winter is going. But there is a lot of competing factors out there. One of them you can see right here in front of uh, us at the moment here. This is the zonal mean wind speed at 10 HPA or right up at the very top of the stratosphere. This is according to the ECMWF model. Now, for the last several weeks, it has been indicating um, a slowdown in the mean zonal winds around the stratospheric polar vortex. The stronger the vortex is, the stronger the winds will blow around it, and more often than not, the stronger the jet stream will be in the middle altitude pattern as well. Of course, we've had a very active jet stream this week. It has been quite displaced to the south. We've had quite a lot of blocking across Greenland, across the Arctic, across Scandinavia as well. What that's been doing is, as these systems with low pre a higher pressure over Europe, what we've seen is areas of low pressure coming in from a southwesterly direction. So that's a warm source which contains more moisture and also riding over warmer than average sea surface temperatures. But as these systems have been moving in from a southwesterly direction, it's been feeling the resistance of high pressure both the northeast and southeast of the UK and Ireland. That has been slowing down the progress northwards and northeastwards of these systems, and we've seen a slowdown, if not a stalling of frontal systems, which have brought uh, persistent heavy rainfall. And we've seen a record breaking wet October for many parts of the UK here in recent times. And I think really the period between well, really August, September and October, uh, it's got to be up there with uh, one of the wettest periods on record, that's for sure. It'll be interesting to see what November brings also. But the, the zonal mean wind, According to the ECMWF, this is, by the way, going back to Wednesday the 25th of October. And you notice here that we have got this uh, above the thick red line represents the average. And when you get to this line here at zero, so this is, of course, the time frame at the bottom. This is the elevation, the altitude here, or the, sorry, the strength of the zonal mean wind. I apologize. So this is the strength of the wind. Um, the stronger and higher the um, the wind is, the stronger the polar vortex is. What happens is the model has indicated that we have a bit of a deceleration of these mean zonal, zonal winds. So we have a little bit of a weakening of the polar vortex in the period here, just as we start the month of November. Then it increases in strength here. And what you notice here is there's some members indicating a bit of a decrease in strength of wind within the stratospheric polar vortex by the time we reach the end of uh, November into early December. So if you keep an eye on that chart here and let's have a look and see what the latest run is indicating. You notice a lot more members and you can even see the thick uh, blue line representing the ensemble mean is now taking a dive well below normal in terms of the strength of the mean zonal winds within the stratosphere by the time we reach the early to middle portion of December here. What does this essentially mean? Now, it essentially means that we are going to see a weaker polar vortex. According to this run, this model, should I say, the ECMWF, and you notice here there is a big spread. There is some members that are indicating that it powers up. Now, notice here it does intensify to potentially quite uh, strong levels by the time we reach the middle portion of November here. We may even see a record strong polar vortex. But then if you notice here that we drop below the average line, 
as we move towards week one of December. And there is some members indicate that the winds reverse from westerly to easterly within the uh, stratospheric polar vortex by the time we reach the early to middle portion of December. Now this, folks, could correlate to a weakening of the PV, therefore a weakening of the jet stream winds within the, uh, the middle latitudes, or it could even highlight the potential of a major sudden stratospheric warming towards the month of December. Now, if by a long shot this happens to, to take place, and we do see that, the effects of that would not occur till probably towards Christmas New Year period and in the early January here. I just want to emphasize that point. This is something that we have to keep a close eye on because the ECMWF has been persistent at driving home this uh, significant weakening, if not um, major sudden stratospheric warming here. If we look at the latest run here of the model here for um, if it's going to allow me to, and I'll show you exactly what the model is indicating with regards to you know a, a, a more tangible view, if you will, rather than just looking at the, the speed of the winds. This is looking over the Arctic region, and this is a, the, the latest model run. So if we we'll play through this loop, you can see uh, what takes place here. So we've got quite strong warming taking place over the uh, North Atlantic at the moment. Is that some sort of a response from troposphere into the stratosphere with regards to the very powerful jet stream that we're seeing across the North Atlantic? That is something that I would be curious to know if anybody has a little bit more uh, knowledge with regards to this uh, situation. Let me know in the comment section below what you think here. But I'm wondering, we've had a, 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 a major shot of uh, early season Arctic air into the United States. That has then triggered the powerful jet stream over the North Atlantic. And then in turn, we're seeing warming within the 10 millibar level over the North Atlantic here. But if we play through this loop, you can see what takes place with time. Notice the strong warming. So is there some sort of a trigger effect, a knock-on domino effect from the warming that we initially see at week one over the North Atlantic, then starts to uh, become a little bit more notable over eastern Siberia. But if we continue to play through this animation, you can see the warming strengthening and also moving towards the Arctic region here. And this, folks, could be significant later down the road, but we'll wait and see what happens. Let's watch this place. Let's continue to monitor the situation as we go forward here. But certainly very interesting development seen by the some of the long-range models. And we will in Saturday's winter update number four, we will look at the long-range models, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's take a look at the CFSV2 weeklies. This is the 500 millibar geo potential height anomalies for the 2nd through the 9th of November. Low pressure dominating, very deep uh, low pressure at that in the means. Week two, you can see here that low pressure remains dominant across the UK and Ireland, but not quite as pronounced. Notice here, even into week three, the 16th through the 23rd of November, low pressure remains dominant. And even in the following week, which takes us to the final week of November, you can see here that low pressure is also dominant here. But notice here, it weakens, but also shifts a little bit further south here. Is that seeing that Scandinavian block redeveloped towards the, the you know, second and latter half of November. That, of course, will be open to question. Again, let me know in the comment section below what you think with regards to that solution here. Let's have a look at the precipitation here because I do think we are going to see a fairly wet November. Will it be as extreme as November? I don't think so. Week one, week two, wet than average. Week three, you can see here slight dry compared to average across the north, weather across the south. Week three, you notice here that we're starting to see a drier pattern develop here what is the temperature anomalies uh, looking like here for the same time frame of course there it does tend to be quite a warm bias seen by the cfsv2 both in the monthlies and the weeklies but you notice here at uh, week one we've got a colder than average iberia uh, also to the southwest of the uk and ireland here with the trough uh, we've got a very very warm eastern portions of europe at the moment here of course deep trough over western europe then tends to uh, correlate to a downstream ridge in the east. This is week two, so you can see here a slightly warmer than average conditions. I think November is going to wind up close to average, possibly even slightly, believe it or not, uh, slightly below average in terms of temperature here. 
based on some of the thinking that I've got, be sure to check out the November forecast issued on markhoganweather.com. There is a link in the description below. And you can see here, as we push through the second half of November, uh, week three actually uh, warmer than average. But notice here that we're starting to see a little bit of a trend towards cooler as we move towards the final week of November here. And looking at the uh, month overall, and you can see here what it's shown with regards to the CFSV2. And, and like I say, in the upcoming winter um, update, this is going to be the fourth winter update and final update before the official forecast is released. I will look at other model runs with regards to the winter season, generally speaking here. So this is uh, the month of, uh, of December, funny enough. Uh, let's have a look and see if we can get to the month of the final run for November here and see what it's indicating here. So this is the month of November. Temperature-wise, slightly above average, which is no surprise here. What's it looking like with regards to the precipitation? Looking firmly wet than average here. So I think that is quite interesting here. But given what we've already seen, of course, uh, in the last couple of months, and yeah, this is the uh, the 500 millibar of potential anomalies here for the month of November here. So low pressure is dominant. How is it looking with regards to the Northern Hemisphere view? Have a quick look at that here. And you can see here quite a little interesting solution. Now, we don't shut down the Atlantic, so I think we are going to continue to see the Atlantic roaring through the month of November. A couple of blips here and there, a little bit of height rises, but then I think low pressure will always come back. Notice here quite a strong area of uh, blocking here across the Siberia side of the pole. We've also got blocking across Greenland extending into scandinavia here that would essentially force the storm track a little bit further south but that is exactly what we've seen high pressure across the east of europe and to the north here which uh, displaced jet stream uh, further south here but of course with the high over europe that has been allowing the storm track to come in to the southwest of the uk here so what has been taking place in recent times of course we've had storm here in and it has been a very notable event, that's for sure. Okay, so first up in the tweets here by the Met Office, Storm Kieran has set a new record for the lowest mean sea level pressure recorded in England and Wales in November with a value of 953.33 hectopascals or millibars. That was set in Plymouth um, and also 958.5 at St. All uh, St. Athen which at the previous record was set all the way back to 1916. So very, very interesting stuff indeed. And also the previous Welsh record was uh, set um, all the way back, well, 2010 actually it was set here. So that is quite interesting. So a new November low pressure record set for both England and Wales. Interesting tweet here by Shrine Bruin. England and Wales had their fourth wettest October on record since 1766. In 2023, only 1903, 2000, and 1987 have had wetter Octobers. Of course, we had the storm of 87 back in October of that year. October of 2000 is the wettest on record, of course, as well. Uh, three Cork stations had their wettest October on record. Astonishing, over 300 millimeters of rainfall in here. Beautiful snowy scenes in parts of southern Greenland here. Cologne in uh, County Down, of course, 110 millimetres of rainfall within a 48-hour period. The average for October is only 100, so pretty amazing stuff here. And this was a wind gust in the far northwest corner of France. We had a wind gust from Storm Cairn of 128 miles per hour. Very, very notable indeed, of course. And uh, this is the particular site here, so a very exposed site. In the northwestern corner at um, Pont uh, de Raz in the northwest of uh, France, here that's where that 128 mile per hour wind gust was recorded. Here, some very impressive possible sting jet development within the system just as it approached the southwest of the UK and Ireland uh, earlier um, yesterday, of course. And uh, yeah, very, very impressive stuff indeed with regards to Storm Cairn. We'll look at a little bit more detail with regards to that. In the coming days to come as i've already said i'm going on holiday as of early next week i will be leaving on, on sunday there will be a global weather report this upcoming sunday there will be a winter update on saturday so i'm going to be continuing to keep busy all the way up until then
Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Stay safe wherever you are. Bye for now.